Welcome to Twisted Monday. Not sure how excited anyone is to see this particular title screen. I like it well enough, though. It's Twisted Metal 1. What could go wrong? Hell, we're even playing as Dark Side. As Satan as they get in this particular video game. What's his deal? Massive, awesome, power are words I'm seeing describing Darkseid. Clearly, will be unstoppable. And Mr. Ash, we know the story. This is the first time I'm repeating a character from the Let's Play. He's, uh, hoping he could retrieve an item so powerful it could destroy the world. And we wish him the best. He will have the Death Blast at his disposal, thin beam of white hot fire, and a lot of armor. So much armor that we don't need any Death Blasts. Which is good, because they're bad. Let's see the one bit of RNG. And okay, we should be absolutely fine. There is precisely one enemy who can give Darkseid a run for its money in this arena in a one-on-one -on -one fight. We didn't get it. There's Yellow Jacket almost dead. I'm gonna get a little bit of extra weapons. I almost called it cash. Because it's effectively as good as money. Except credit, debit, and fire missiles. I'm maxed out. Here's our friend. He's dead. It's just that easy with Darkseid. Nothing's gonna stop us. Truly, we are practically already done with the competition. Call it right now. We're just gonna go stomp Yellow Jacket again, like he's nothing. He knows better now, he's running away from me. Trying anyway. Yellow Jacket's uh, special, and most specials in this game. Swerve your vehicle when they make contact. Resulting in a situation where you cannot just repeatedly ram them over and over again. Enemies are actually very keen to the fact that what you want to do as the player is ram them over and over again. So they will try and get you with their special and throw off that aim. If you can't keep them on screen, you cannot crash into them. I've said before, armor is the god stat. Darkseid has the most armor in this game. It's the biggest, it can ram the hardest. This should be an unbelievably fun playthrough of the game. But of course, the game knew just how overpowered armor was. Put in a few fail safes. Keep this from being a total cakewalk. That said, things have gone well so far. Once you get multiple opponents, they're no longer guaranteed to go well, but I will take this any day of the week. What we've seen thus far, A-OK -okay in my book. However, it all comes down to this last shot. Double kill, I lost a life. Tragic. I don't think I should have lost a life there. Since the opponent was dead. Just give me the credit. Let me move on. So now I have none of my weapons. Just starting weapons. And I gotta crush everybody all over again. I warn you now, we're probably not going to survive this attempt. Because I came in with less than full lives. You wouldn't think that would be a problem. Because one life 
that this particular vehicle is like equivalent to all of Mr. Grimm's lives, all of Crimson Fury's lives in terms of HP. But that lack of mobility comes back to bite you. And the ravenous enemies who only target you. One down, at least. Honestly, don't know what got me there. Must have been Roadkill Special. Because most other attacks do not swerve your vehicle upon making contact. Nice thing is, the specials also pop you up into the air. And if you land on an enemy vehicle, you crush them. Your hitboxes connect, merge into one, and deal a ton of damage to them. It's not really an intended mechanic, but it works as though it were. So this life is over. Just line everybody up so that they shoot each other. And hope that I can somehow pull out two incredibly high damage kills on my one remaining life. I mentioned this was unlikely. And it is. Fortunately, Sweet Tooth and um, Hammerhead crashed into each other a whole bunch in their fervor to get at my corpse because they cannot recognize a living opponent and differentiate it from a dead opponent. And the recharge stations are back online. It's your best case scenarios for making this last life count. Still might not be good enough. If the enemies don't come to me while I'm hanging out over here, I have no chance of survival. Because they will beat me up while I try to kill them. And then another one will swoop in while I'm in a bad situation. And I will not have the opportunity to make it all the way to these refill stations. Because I will be dead. So I just sort of need to hang out here and hope that the enemies realize that what they're doing is kind of a stalemate. And no one can progress until they act. Maybe if I leave the area, someone will venture into the main drag and I can kill them. It seems like the AI may actually be programmed to avoid this main drag, at least during this campaign. It's my only explanation anyway. Yes, if only I could pirouette the way CPU Darkseid does, I'd be unstoppable. But the only way I can do that as the player is to take a special attack to the face. Somehow only Sweet Tooth is out this way? The enemy placement makes no sense. And I move around so slowly that by the time I get them on the radar, they have moved to another place where I already checked. This is astoundingly wasteful for a run that is going to fail anyway. Sorry about that. But this is a short game. Maybe I need to drag it out a little bit. Oh yeah, they're accidentally killing one another. I'm not complaining. Two doing some drunk driving. Rid of him. Hammerhead's in kind of a bad spot, actually. And the last enemy seems to be in the red. Yeah, Hammerhead's stuck 
there, and he crushed Yellow Jacket. It seems like AI infighting is going to win this one. You don't see that too often. Yeah. I just, uh, pulled the AI vulture tactics and it somehow worked. Strange, but I'm not gonna complain. This is a dead end. We're not making it through this one. So a couple load screens and we'll come back with three lives. Hammerhead's on my team, apparently. Big fan of Dark Side because we're both the biggest vehicles in the game. Didn't even want to show up in the arena where it could have easily taken one of our lives. That's worst case scenario. If you get uh, Hammerhead in the arena as basically any character, you're in a bad state. But here we go. Right where we left off. I fully expected to have to reload the last level, so technically we're doing better than expected. Just barely. It turns out I'm really bad at Dark Side. Not for any particularly good reason either. It's just slow and hard to maneuver. And um we rely heavily on ramming damage, because our special is miserable. The worst one in the game, by a wide margin. So, we need that to live. Ramming damage is effectively random. It appears to have rules, but those rules are based on the speed you're going, the speed your opponent is going, the direction in which you make contact with the vehicle. The shape of your hitbox and theirs. Basically, everything is a factor. Nearby terrain, nearby geometry. All of it impacts collision damage. We only have control over, like two or three of those factors. So, as far as what we're actually able to do, it counts as being random. Still alive. Warthog is gonna be very troublesome. So you would think Hammerhead would be the easy mode of this game when controlled by the player. And I haven't actually played as Hammerhead, that might be the case. I assume, based on my experience with Darkseid, that it is not the case. Speed and maneuverability end up being far more important than I ever suggested in the Let's Play of this game. But we got a good damage roll there. Oh, also the random direction that the enemy happens to be bounced when making impact with you affects the sort of uh, damage they take. Because, of course, full heal. That might get us through this one just fine. There's Mr. Grimm. I could one-shot him or I could ram him head on and only do just the tiniest little bit of his HP seen that plenty of times. Warthog, however, very highly resistant to ramming damage. So I'm firing my special at him to soften him up a little bit. It's very ineffective. I might actually use a free shot. Yeah. Well, this is awkward. But somehow we came out on top. 
There should be one last recharge. If the uh, refs don't get me, I might be able to use it, or it might still be offline. It appears that it is still offline. So I'm out of healing. And resources in general. I'm pretty dead here. Anyway, these big cars. As effective as the AI uses them, they really are not as effective in the player's hands as you would expect. They're good for beginners, I'll say. Sweet Tooth especially, because Sweet Tooth is huge, has not the worst possible speed. And has a good special. Sweet Tooth is OP. Sweet Tooth is always OP. And there we go. Did a handstand to celebrate our victory. Balancing on our exhaust pipes. Now, for so many enemies. This is all gonna come down to how much damage can we randomly deal to our targets by crashing into them. Apparently, it's none at all. There. Hit him with my bumper. It took one letter worth of HP off his uh, bar. He made me pay for it, that's for sure. So I'm just gonna saunter over here, gently. Don't even worry about it. This one all comes down to your ram damage rolls. We did half of Spectre's health in one hit and virtually no damage whatsoever on the second. And then right through him on the final. And if we go for this, it's really hard to get as Darkseid. Darkseid is Satan, so getting the church refill is abnormally hard. But we threaded the needle, got in there. So far, I'll say, so good. That is our one and only full heal, and only one opponent is dead. I like to imagine that our special is fired by pulling on the big air horn that we know trucks like this have. That's the sound it makes anyway. You haven't really seen Hammerhead do his special. It's very obvious when Hammerhead does a special on you as this vehicle. Because he just stands there grinding his tires against the top of your car. So maybe I'll uh, show that off sometime. Hopefully not. But I probably will. That said, Sweet Tooth is closer to dead. I can't believe Warthog is here. Being the opportunist. I should probably mention this game has an actual easy mode that I've never actually played. I assume it just reduces enemy aggression. The way hard mode ratchets it up as high as it'll go. But I'll never know. It does not block any progress in this game at least. Wasn't until Twisted Metal 2 that they decided you're just not allowed to play half the game. You don't play it on at least normal. Got the whole Kane family here. A 
must die. Eventually will die. I wouldn't mind taking him with me, but yeah, there we go. The foregone conclusion has been fulfilled. You got to get some lethal ram damage in rapidly. So with this one, you got to kill a bunch of enemies as quickly as possible. And then focus down the big ones once they are isolated. Because right there, I could have killed Sweet Tooth, but he had backup. So much backup. Easy mode is actually viable for the entirety of this game. Twisted the Metal 2, there literally is no easy mode for the last three levels, four levels maybe? Those levels simply cannot be played on easy mode. I think I like tried and it kicked me out. Maybe I'll have to test that again someday. It's been a long time since that Let's Play. Let's try something with Hammerhead. He's headed to a nice isolated area. So if he stops us dead in our tracks, it won't be that big a deal. Ramming into him bounces him off of us. Repeatedly. Hey, he's not even trying to fight me. There, drop me on top of you. It's precisely what I want, actually. Eh, whatever. Hammerhead's not uh, cooperating. Who needs him? Oh, I'm gonna have to do the surgical church parking lot thing again. That's unfortunate. If I'd gotten Sweet Tooth while he was uh, doing that two wheel spinning around thing that he loves to do. That would have done tremendous damage. In a hypothetical sense. I don't know what got me there. But I think we're gonna be stalled out here for a while. Hello, keeping this video at its usual length. Wouldn't want a short Twisted Monday going out there. Make me look like a liar. This playthrough should actually be pretty short regardless. Just because, like, when you get a successful full damage collision, it's like half an enemy's health, even if they have just gigantic amounts of armor. It kills them so quickly. Sweet Tooth ought to be dead. But it's not. Just leaving. Which leaves the church open, at least. I don't know why we're even trying this. We're in a very bad spot. This is classic, like, re-roll. Throwing the towel on this one. There we finally go. It's so awkward. You can't be hanging off the right side of the pathway. You have to be on the left side. You can overlap the left side very slightly, but not the right side. You gotta take the left-hand path if you're going to church. And you are safe. Head-on collision. Let me get your information there, Sweet Tooth. We can actually look up what his license plate is. It's in the game manual. And they're all puns. I wonder if that's part of signing up for Twisted Metal. Is putting a pun on your license plate. Considering that, I guess we should look up what uh, Mr. Ash's license plate is for Dark Side here.
Okay, Thumper could have murdered me with his flamethrower. Didn't end up firing it off in the right moment. And thus, he's on the verge of death. Would be dead if I had nailed that ram. Or not. Maybe rams just don't do any damage right now. Finally. Turn on no clip for a second. Making him immune to collision damage. Uh oh. We got Molotovs. You can see it sometimes. Sweet Tooth's Napalm Cone looks exactly the same as Yellow Jacket's Molotov Cocktails. They're the same sprite. Little cost saving measure there. Bitch. Took me many hours to even notice, so uh, I guess they're cutting corners in the right spots. The average player would simply never know. And even if you do, who cares? Someone who needs to fill, like, six hours of commentary while discussing Twisted Metal 1, that's who cares. And that is about it. Okay, he's Molotoving me. Making me a sitting duck for the refs. One of them eventually took me out. So there is a weapon in this game called Rear Flame, I think? It'd be absurd if they just called it Rear Fire, but that actually might be the title of it. Any vehicle can use the flamethrower, but it fires from behind. And it has a reduced range compared to Thumper's flamethrower. So, it's useless. I absolutely never use it, but sometimes I activate it and, like, fire it off as a taunt. Just light a fart at my enemies. What are they going to do about it? There's so many useless vestigial weapons in this game. Wouldn't be until Twisted Metal 3 that they had a similar number of useless vestigial weapons that ended up cut from future releases. I can probably find a rear flame. I think I know where they're stashed. It's out on the highway. It wraps around this whole level. Mr. Grimm's actually uh, taking some shots at me. And then it gave up. So I do not expect to win this one. Please fast forward the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Actually, the recharge stations just went back online. So, maybe. Mr. Grimm, absorbing some shots from Warthog. Allowing me to get a tiny bit of uh, extra damage on Warthog. It's weird how often fire ends up indicating a worthless weapon in Twisted Metal. As you would think, fire. Deadly. Very scary. No one wants it anywhere near their car. But it turns out, it's like BattleBots. If your BattleBot shoots fire, it is as good as dead right now. Just scrap the thing. It is not getting past the first round. I think BattleBots actually did not allow fire. Then there was like a competing, no rules, MMA style robot fighting league. And that's where all the firebots went and died horrible deaths. Mr. Grimm might steal the rear flame that I know for a fact is out here somewhere. If it's in the center of the road, he will grab it accidentally. Won't have any use for it. He'll grab it. Get this oil slick out of my inventory.
Maybe I'm mistaken about the rear flame, because I never look for the things. But I know there is one in this level. It might be this other area that I never normally check. Maybe up here. I'm pretty sure there's nothing up there in this version of the level. Roadkill's almost dead for some reason. If I spot him, I'll kill him. That's rear fire missiles. There is something up there. Let's clip our way up there, awkwardly, for fire missiles. There's simply no other way to get them in this world. Oil sick. Not what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Can't believe I haven't maxed out my inventory yet. Who's that? Mr. Grimm? In the LA River? Like a Terminator 2 of sorts. I'm frozen. It's really hard to tell with this vehicle because uh, Dark Side is normally tinted a little bit blue. I'm swerving all over the place. This is why I don't go in this area, but that was um, Hammerhead Special. Get his wheels up on top of my car for a second there. Any other vehicle, it rolls over your car. It just keeps on driving. Without any impediment. Dark side's so damn big. Can't make it over, it just stops in place. There's Thumper again, not worried about that corpse. Normally I really avoid corpses. Because crashing into them deals you a lot of damage. We have a lot of HP, so relatively, it really doesn't matter. We ramp corpses around, rearrange them. We have a good old morbid time, if we felt like it. Warthog still being a problem. I get these power missiles pointed at his face. That would be the end of him. There we go. I think I landed half of the ones that I fired. Which is a bit wasteful. These are good missiles. Should we just throw him away? Mr. Grimm is no challenge, and Roadkill has 1 HP. Let's finally kill Roadkill. For some reason, he is uh, not happy to see me. And is faster than me, so he can just run away forever. Mr. Grimm, you want to fight? Anyone want to fight? Please. I'm close to winning, actually. Mr. Grimm, I'll even let you play on a uh, spot you can maneuver much more easily than I can. For a few seconds. Now surely Roadkill will come and see me now. How can he resist? There's nothing else for him to do. It's over here somewhere. I'm gonna use my turbo to try and get to him sooner. Ugh, where is he? He's out on the highway? I can't get there from here. I've gone entirely the wrong direction. He has legitimately one HP. 
This is not a fight. There's nothing left of him. He cannot win. Only winning move is not to play, and he knows it. With that one, there he goes. That went on much longer than it needed to, but uh, it did end in victory. I can't say I was expecting that. So, overall, that's pretty good. Now for a real long shot. One life for the last three enemies and the final boss. Can it be done? Surely no human has ever attempted this. Don't check YouTube, it's futile. It's never been done. And it never will be. Almost threw myself right over the edge. Oh, I think I wasted some of those homing missiles. Or power missiles or whatever they were. Assume? No, they went right into the ground, those rear missiles. They have homing, but it doesn't work very well. Yep, we gotta kill Red Anger once again. Who's been in probably more levels than any other vehicle this run. All of which is entirely scripted. This game cannot have random opponents. Breaks if it tries. That's what I like to see. The one thing we don't want to do is kill enemies on this, like, incline. As long as they stay away from that area, they are marked for death. I've used up enough weapons that I can grab all these. Okay, Thumper's here with me. That would have been a good time to kill him. I think he tried to do the Twisted Metal 4 trick, where you free someone while they're going over the edge of a building. And then they fall to their death. Fortunately, it didn't work. The timing is preposterous. That would never work in this game. Only worse than Twisted Metal 4 because you have freeze bombs, so you don't have to time it. Oh, up already. Shot it with so many machine guns. There we go. We. I just wanted a fair fight on the ground floor. Oh well. We got... I almost remember this password, what is it? There we go. I've typed it in many, many times. Specifically for Darkseid. Because I was much, much worse at this game when I initially did the Let's Play in 2019. Darkseid is the vehicle that I used to beat this last level. So we have seen this before. I'm actually doing it slightly better than I did at the time. Random thing, ignore Outlaw, who needs him. I find it absolutely essential 
to open the pyramid and knock down the box before you do anything. If you don't do those two things, you will regret it later on. Now there are people who watched the Let's Play and didn't know you could knock down the box. So clearly they had beaten the game without doing this. But I sure can't do that. I need every tool at my disposal. Outlaw actually ran me for more damage than it took. Which is not supposed to happen with the way this game's ram damage works. But I believe I've said it's pretty inconsistent with how the ram damage works. I got my traction back right at the last second. One more second of slipperiness and I'd be dead. I think I did twist the metal one last month as well. But uh, there's still a lot of twisted metal one left. So I'm probably going to do an increased amount of twisted metal one. Take out the last seven characters that I haven't played yet out of 12, so... Plenty more where this came from. Whether you like it or not. I did just use the refill, right? Because it's still active. I think I used it and then it came right back online right afterwards. It's possible that the uh, oil slick does not affect AI. Because I saw that as well. Chad pointed out. That outlaw drove right through it. And gave no fucks. Just kept driving as though completely unaffected. Presumably because they were completely unaffected. If I had to guess. Not the best place to kill Thumper, but it would still be fine. That's one of the worst places, though. So congratulations, you outsmarted me. Crimson Fury is as good as gone, so... Where are you at? Dead. If we can get Thumper at the top of this incline, that would be great. Let's lure him up, let him make the turn, and blow him up. Not because we need to for safety, but because it'll be good to have his corpse right around there. Yeah, that's a good spot for him to die. Crimson Fury apparently unharmed. We could one-shot him with a good ram. Soften him with a power missile. And spin around wildly because of his special. I'll play it absurdly safe. Go for the recharge. Then kill him wherever he ends up. We have a corpse right where we need it, so... We're all good. Unless I can't get this thing. I took it! I don't even need that! Yeah, that sucked. Got all the rest of my health. But all that's left is minion. We have all our lives. And I have no problem spending them to kill Minion. We don't really want to ram Minion the way we have with every other enemy so far. Just want to wait for him to come to me. Wreck his day the instant he lands. 
As a reminder, this is the only game on the PS1 where your machine gun overheats eventually. There goes all the pickups in the entire level. As I gather them all before initiating that fight. Here's one that I missed. But our machine gun can overheat, so I can't just use it to aim. Turns out Crimson Fury's corpse was in a very bad spot. Took a pretty decent chunk of damage there. Honestly, though, this run has gone better than expected. Significantly better. I expected to have to reload from Password after almost every level. The fact that I haven't had to do that speaks volumes to me. Let's see... Yeah, he's got every special. And getting hit with any special causes our vehicle to spin in place. It's been a big problem throughout the entire run. Unsurprisingly, it remains a problem right now. Ram from the side, and then die. So, we are suddenly in a bad spot. Can we pull this out? I guarantee that we can. I cannot guarantee that we will. I believe in the Let's Play, I actually, like, sat down there and fought him. He dropped a road spike, which is the best thing he could have done, surprisingly. As I stumbled right into it. My movement ain't much to begin with. Could barely move it all there. That looks good. But we are going to need more ammo to finish him. Here's some ammo. This is what we call a scary situation. And unfortunately, he snuck up behind me. Backstabbed. I literally didn't see that coming. Actually kind of surprised. The minion fight is among the easier parts of the Dark Side campaign. So I'm doing well where I thought I wouldn't. And bad where I thought I would. However, let's do this. I've talked about it before. This password is distinctly different from the one I just entered a second ago. But it still works. We got an affirmative sound. Prepare for rooftop combat. Three enemies. And minion. At the same time. So this makes it even more important to knock down the pyramid right away. Just everything we got, take down the pyramid. Get the delicious treats from within, eventually. I hear Minion. Minion's treads actually have a very loud, unique sound effect. I've never heard so clearly before. But yeah, Minion's here, and we are responsible for his death. As well as that of three random opponents. Which are not at all random. That was a pretty good damage on Crimson Fury. Didn't get to see how beat up Outlaw got. What I'm going for is Minion, and he's not participating. He's very ill-behaved today. He's being incredibly naughty. 
can't say I appreciate it. There he is. But he's in a very bad spot. I'm not messing around with that. I don't even know what's going on there. I think Crimson Fury's corpse was inside of my hitbox. And I legitimately couldn't move. I've never actually seen that before. Just for a couple seconds there. I was generating a million sparks. I didn't take a good look at my... Um, my HP bar while that was occurring. I suspect I was taking continuous damage. Because that's usually what happens with any contact with anything. If it generates sparks, you're losing HP. That's what we have the video for. To determine whether or not that was the case. Minion followed me over the third U-shaped rooftop, I think. Yeah, here he comes. Why do I have a terrible weapon activated? So here's what you want to see. Minion. Maybe it's lunchy. Not me falling off the edge. That is less enjoyable to see. So he's almost dead. However, that tiny sliver of his health bar is more than my entire health bar when uninjured. Do not yet have cause to celebrate. Also, he has one little minion left of his own. Minions minion. Who could swoop in and deal the killing blow after we finish minion off? But they're also deep in the red. Oh, he's above me. Knew my strategy. Thought he'd head me off. He's dead. That uh, just leaves Thumper. I've said it many times, spawning Minion with the three other enemies is a much easier way to do this fight. But we've never seen it this way before, and I figured it was about time he showed it off. It's not much easier, it's just a little bit easier. It's just a cool thing, and I don't know why it exists. But I've showed off so much about this game. So much redundant stuff, including this fight. I've done this fight on video as Darkseid before. But never this way, so there we go. Unique content, technically. <laughs> it got us through to the end in under an hour. But after credits, we might top out just over an hour. Otherwise, this is a record-breaking run in terms of my full playthroughs of Twisted Metal 1. You are the winner of the competition and are granted an audience with Calypso, the creator of the Twisted Metal Contest. As you speed into his underground garage, you spot him, surrounded by bodyguards and seated on a throne of broken car parts. His face is burnt beyond recognition. His smile is hideous. When he recognizes you, his face goes pale. No, he screams. He's mine. He is mine. He's not yours, you tell him. He's one of my most powerful demons, and you stole him, used him to gather up your prizes for this competition of yours. Let's go, Black. It's time to come home. And with that, a shadowy figure on the back wall of the garage flies out of the darkness and into your head, disappearing into your body. Calypso screams in agony. You simply smile. He's coming back home with me, you say. Your contest, your vision, is over for good. See you in hell, Calypso. I'll be waiting. You speed off into the LA night, searching for the expressway back to hell. You hear it is located somewhere near Hollywood. Yep, that is the backstory of Manslaughter. The people's favorite. 
discovered just now by Mr. Ash. Manslaughter is a descendant of Darkseid. We all knew that if we saw the live action ending. Wherein the character of Black is portrayed by a garbage bag with like someone's arm in it, wiggling it around. Absolutely terrible puppet. And uh, Calypso actually does scream in agony for like a minute straight. It's one of the most unwatchable endings. But also one of the most entertaining. Because Mr. Ash's actor is actually pretty good. Calling any of the endings in the live action cut ending series the most entertaining is very high praise because they're all very entertaining. Honestly, kind of a shame they were cut from the game. I miss them. But now every character in this game has two endings, each of them slightly different. This one effectively has the same outcome, just some changed details throughout. But otherwise, pretty much the same. Of course, the series would go on to completely bungle any explanation of what Black is or what it does. It's eventually just a guy in a bondage hood driving around a dump truck. That is the next and final time we see Black. Ah, well. The credits are weird, because they come from, like, both Sony and single track. So there's multiple directors. Like, numerous different categories, which include software development. It's hard to keep track of who did what. This game had a lot of executive meddling, so... You do see it sort of split up between the creative team and the productive team. People who were messing around with the formula while they were just trying to slap together a game to be released the same day as Warhawk, one of the best PS1 games of the entire console. I will say that it is actually not strange that they only credit the Calypso actor for the live action scenes because that's the only actor who made it into the final game. If you uh, watch the ending, Calypso's face is staring at you while you're trying to read the text. It's swirling over his burnt mug. All the other actors do not appear anywhere in the game except as photos when you select the vehicle, which I guess means they are as present as the ones in the, like, as Calypso, that is to say. So maybe they should have gotten credits. They certainly aren't featured as clearly, but uh, a lot of their faces are legitimately in the game. So I'm gonna launch a petition to see that they get royalties every time I stream this game. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't launch that petition. And the stream just ticked over the one hour mark, so uh, yeah, the credits did it. Unfortunately. The finished YouTube video might not actually be over an hour. But yeah, there's the guy who played Sweet Tooth. And Yellow Jacket. Or, uh, Charlie Kane. Mr. Ash's actor does not appear in the game, though, for some reason. Very strange. Maybe he actually did want credit because he's actually a good actor. He might have been, like, the one guy that they got who knew what he was doing and had acted before and probably demanded, like, actual signed contracts to include his likeness in the game. And when they cut him from the cutscenes, they did not want to finish the bottom line on that contract. They tore it up. Everyone else, they made it in.
Not Mr. Grimm, though. And this guy... I don't know who this guy is. Like, I don't think he actually appears in any of the live-action cutscenes. But his silhouette is that of Mr. Ash as well. It seems like they just took this exact picture, made it a silhouette, and then altered it slightly with some sprite work. And that became Mr. Ash. Anyway, that's a very important and very fun story for Twisted Metal 1 taken care of. Now for the hard part of this stream. In the bonus content, I'm going to play through the levels of Twisted Metal Black that I missed as Crazy 8. So that'll be three more levels to come in an entirely different game. Uh, we don't need to see the demo, though. There we go. Thanks for joining me. Um, Twisted Metal Black coming up in a moment. But that's the end of this playthrough. I am Fiendly, and I thank you for watching Twisted Monday.